Hi everyone and welcome to Floss Tube number 15. My name is Laura and you can find me as Textily Crafts on Instagram. I am filming this on Saturday, February the 10th and I'm going to be sharing with you a finish that I had for January's Whip Go Call. And I have a lot of goodies, stitching goodies that came in, some patterns and fabrics and things, as well as some crochet I'll share at the end. And then we have our three giveaway winners for the Valentine's patterns. And then a little bit of a life update I will share at the very end that has affected my stitching and will affect the channel just for a little while. So anyway, we'll save that for the very end of the video. And I have a few things that I want to mention from the last video. If you recall, in my last floss tube number 14, I had showed you the red antique sampler that I had a question about. And so thank you all so much who answered my question on what you thought the letter was. And it seems like most of you agreed that that letter did appear to be an X, even though it's a very interesting and unique spelling of what is probably a shortened nickname for Francisca or Francesca, it is most probably an X. And even a few of you mentioned that it could be XI for a Roman numeral, which is a very interesting thought too, it's something that I had not thought of. So as I said, I have just decided based on everyone's feedback that I'm going to chart it as is shown and then it leave it up to the stitcher if you decide to stitch this as well to interpret that name however you see fit but it's still a beautiful piece whatever the letter is and i am anxious to get back to charting this and get started stitching it so anyway i just wanted to mention that and thank everyone who answered and gave me their thoughts on what that letter was on the sampler and i also want to thank stitchy girl uh, that is your YouTube username. You caught an error for me on Cinnamon Stars. I had showed y'all my progress on Cinnamon Stars, which is on the 36 count cappuccino by Fibrona Whim. And you had, asked, you had pointed out that I left out the windows on the top level of this house. And you were absolutely correct. I do not know how I missed that. Funny thing is, I remember when I was stitching this house thinking that it was kind of an odd proportion how small the door was compared to the house not realizing there should have been a second set of windows above that. So I think I just got on a roll. I was My goal that day of stitching this was to finish that house and I just got to going on the fill-in and just totally missed those windows. So unfortunately the next time I pick this up I'm going to have to frog to put those windows in because it just doesn't look right without them. So anyway, thank you for catching that. I did not notice it and I would hate to have that framed and then realize that later. Then Linda had a question on my last video and I did answer her in the YouTube comments, but I just wanted to mention it in case it would help anyone else who had a similar problem. She said she likes stitching on 18 count Ada, but she finds it hard to in her stitches on the back because her stitches are very tight so it's hard to get the needle through those stitches on the back to end your thread and I don't personally have that problem I think it's everyone's tension is different and also Ada tends to be a stiffer fabric so I can see that happening more on Ada whereas like the linen fabric is super soft so I don't find that it's my stitches are very tight on the back but once again that's more of a personal tension Thing. not that one is right or wrong it's just a matter of how you stitch and so I had recommended a video by Caterpillar Cross Stitch that I will link below it's four different ways to end your thread on Ada so you may find that helpful also I use a very thin needle my favorite needle is the Peacemakers size 28 and I usually use that with any count fabric but it is really good on those higher counts and so if it's thin enough you may maybe could slide it through your thread but also this little gadget I always keep in my little notions bag next to my stitching. And this is from 123 Stitch. That's the only place I found it, but I'm sure you can find it other places. It's called the Star Detailer and it's by CompuStitch. And right now it's in the packaging. It comes with instructions, but it's very simple to use. It's basically just a way to end your thread, to pull your thread through and I find it especially useful if you have a very small tail left and you just need to pull that through and you don't really have enough room with your needle, this thing comes in handy and it's very inexpensive on 123 stitch. So it's something worth having and you may find this useful if you also struggle with your stitches being tight because this is thinner than a needle would be. So I just wanted to mention this just in case you've never heard of this notion or haven't tried it. It is nice to have in your toolkit. Okay, so let's move on to my finish. And this was my second call for January's Whip Go. 
and it is the Winter Quaker by Primrose Cottage. And so this is the chart. I know many of you have seen this because so many of you have been stitching it for the winter. And this is my finish on 36 count platinum using one strand of the called for floss over two threads. And I really love how this came out. And you can see what I did here at the bottom instead of doing the date, I just chose different motifs from the pattern and pick some that would fit in that area. And I really like how that came out. So I had just decided that I didn't want to stitch the date on these. I just, because I will put a charm on the back. And I had also noted that like on this pattern, it is for 2023. And so I haven't received a chart from them yet that had the 2024, but one of you, I think it was, um, Mary in the comments of my last video, you let me know that Primrose Cottage did release a number chart in their recent newsletter. So it was, I searched my email because I am a member of their newsletters and it was back, I think sometime in, Jan, in I'm sorry, and it was back in December that they released this number chart. So if you are a subscriber to the new newsletter, just search your email and it should be in there. But I'm sure you could get it from them if you don't have that yet. But they do have a number chart if you wanna change that year. So thank you, Mary, for letting me know. And I had already stitched this before I realized that. But anyway, that's just what I had decided to do on these anyway. So, but it is good to know that they have the years available if you want to change it. Okay, let's go ahead and do the giveaways for the patterns. So I'm giving away a copy of the Lovely Hearts pattern, as well as Key to the Heart. Those are my two Valentine's Day releases. And if you don't know, Handmade by Sarah W and Cindy the Scrappy Chick are doing a stitch along with this pattern. And so you can check out their Instagram and their YouTubes to see what they're doing. And they are using the hashtag LovelyHeartsSal. And I'm already seeing some of your starts and I love it. And I've seen a finish using blue thread, which was very pretty. So I just love to see the creativity and what you decide to do with these patterns. And so um, make sure to tag me if you're joining along because I would love to see what you're doing. And thank you ladies for hosting that sal. That was totally their idea. So that was really sweet of them to decide to get together and plan to do that. So I really appreciate that. So I'm giving away three copies. And like I said, if you win, you're gonna get one of each. So if I do call your name, please email me at the email list in the description box and if you want a PDF copy just let me know and all I need to do is reply to your email and I will uh, attach both PDFs to that email if you do want a paper copy just please give me your address in that email so I did the random comment picker and I used the word love and the first winner and this is your username on YouTube is Griffin and three and you said, love your videos and your talent. Your stitching is beautiful. Look forward to seeing your new designs. I love your patterns. So thank you so much. And the next winner is Pam Peterson 3092. You said, the antique sampler is pretty. I haven't started any yet, but I love the Primrose Cottage Quaker designs. They are so pretty. And I love that you have ventured out and have started designing cross stitch patterns. So thank you, Pam. And you are the, the second winner of the Valentine's patterns. And then our next winner is Jeanette Smith 501. You said, love all your projects. Look forward to purchasing the red sampler. So thank you so much, Jeanette, and congratulations to all the winners. Please, like I said, reach out to me and I will get those to you right away. So thank you everyone who entered and the patterns will still be for sale in my Etsy shop 25% off through Valentine's Day the PDF and the paper chart, so whatever you prefer. No code is needed, they're already just marked down from the original price. So thank you all who have supported um, my second pattern release. I really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing your stitching. Okay, I did have some things come in the mail and I think this may have came in and I forgot to show it to you last time, but I had decided to order the flower threads color card. I know a lot of people have been really raving about how they love the flower threads and one of the antique samplers that I have when I first saw it my mind went straight to flower threads. I think it would be a perfect project for that and so I've decided to get the color card so I will be able to closely match those colors and then even compare it to my DMC to see what I need to order. And so these are all the colors of the flower thread. So it's really nice to have this on hand because I even have a few charts in my stash that I definitely want to convert to the flower threads as well. So this was a great purchase and this is available on their website, the flower threads um, 
website. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I'll link it below. So with that, I needed some 32 count linen because from what I've heard, the flower thread works best on 32 or 16 count for coverage. You can use it on 36 if you like that fuller coverage, but I think I'm gonna prefer it on the 32. So I ordered a few colors from Hobby House, and this is 32 count Kenneth by Grace Notes Fabric. So it's a really pretty darker color, which is really what I wanted because it more closely matches the color of the antique sampler and I really want those brighter colors of the flower thread to pop. And this one is 32 count old linen by XGU Designs. So another pretty uh, darker color. And I love XJU Designs linens. And then lastly for 32 count, this is Rustic Driftwood by XJU Designs. So it's a little bit more of a lighter tan color. Not such a khaki, but more of a true tan, but also a very pretty color. So I have those ready to go whenever I do chart that sampler, which I haven't had a chance to show you yet, but the first one will be the red sampler that I showed you. I just like to have these fabrics and threads ready to go for whenever I am ready to chart that one. Okay, this one is Hands Across the Sea and Campion. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this new release. It just really caught my eye. I love the simplicity of it and I would love to have like a red and a black sampler wall. So I went ahead and got this with the called for floss. They were out of one of the colors. So I have that coming from one, two, three stitch. So I'm gonna have to see where those colors are because it looks all black to me when you look at the photos. So that's interesting that there's two other colors. And so I'm not sure yet what I wanna do that on, but I did order two 36 counts to try. So this one is 36 count Rocky Mountain by XJU Designs. So as you know, for my samplers, I love a little bit of modeling. And so this has a little bit of a gray modeling to it. I'm not sure if the camera is really picking that up, but I was thinking that might look good with the black floss. So that's going to be an option for that one. And then this one is Dark Mountain and it's more of an all over gray, less of the cream background. So it's really hard to tell when you're looking at pictures online. It's a little bit darker than I thought it would be, but we'll find some use for this, even if it's not for that sampler. And then Evelyn from my last video, you commented about my antique sampler that I had a question about the alphabet. And you mentioned that you just recently completed this GGR sampler and it had a similar letter. And so I decided to purchase it to have for my stash. I don't think I have a GGR sampler yet in my stash. So I definitely want to stitch this, but this is the, the cover photo showing the antique. So it's a very beautiful sampler and I have not studied it yet to see where those similar letters are, but it is called Mary Hunter 1844. So it is from a similar time period. So thank you, Evelyn, for letting me know about this piece. And I, meant to look it up on Instagram because I would love to see some finishes of this other than just the reproduction, but I can tell it's a beautiful piece with beautiful colors. Okay, I also couldn't resist getting this one. I've been seeing this all over Instagram, the Heart in Hand 2024 Collector's Heart, and I just absolutely love this with the different colors, the quilted heart, just everything about it is so pretty. So it comes with the button and it comes with 32 count linen. But I went ahead and bought 36 count in case I want to change that and do one strand instead of the two. And it doesn't come with the floss, so I got all the called for overdies and then I got the 36 count. I got the same color of linen. I just bought, it's platinum, which is the color I like anyway. So I'll either do that and save that for the flower thread projects or I don't know I may do it as called for we'll see but I just wanted to have the option to change it so my winter mystery box came in from Annabella's that I had pre-ordered and it comes with several patterns so I'll just quickly show you those this is called winter this is winter sampler so it looks like they all have a similar color palette. And then this is the Red Work Valentine. And we also got some candy. We got fabric and finishing items. We got the floss. And we also got some thread drops and some little notions in a bag. So they really send you a lot for what you pay for, 
with the box. And so I think they may have had a spring box. I did not get that one recently. I'm not sure if they have any left. And also this past weekend was the Annabella's retreat, which was um, the winter pop-up retreat with a, a guest host, Annie the Proper Stitcher, and a few others. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend, which I'll explain why later. Um, but I did get all the patterns. So I had emailed Elaine and told her I wouldn't be able to attend that day. And she so kindly emailed me the digital swag bag, as they call it, because when you when you register, you get a physical box and you also get a um, digital patterns the day of the actual event. So I will show you what I got in the mail. This is the physical swag bag that comes in the mail and you get a bingo card to play your games with. They always do a fun bingo game for prizes. There is some more of the beautiful thread drops of the birds that came in that winter box. And then this is the Redwork Bear. So it's a similar, it must be doing a seri Redwork series similar to the red work valentine and then this was annie the proper stitchers pattern and it's called love story and we also got the dmc floss for that one and then silver creek samplers was another one of the designers and this is love is in the hair play on words there and we also got the dmc floss for that as well and then little robin designs Okay, Little Robin Designs gifted us a chart too, but I'm not allowed to show it to you yet because it is a early market release. And so it's a, um, it was only for attendees of that. So I'm sure you will see it soon with when they present their market releases. So as far as digital releases, I'm gonna show you on my phone because I'm not sure editing wise if I'm gonna have time to add all the images to this. So this is from Finally a Form Girl and it is Home is Where You Hang Your Heart and it's a really cute snowman. And then this is another one from Annabella's and this is Happy at Home Winter. So it's got the two birds and really cute. And then this one is Snowflakes or Kisses from Heaven, which is another Annabella's chart. And this one is Winter, which may be one that I just showed you. I think they gifted us some of these that were in the, yeah, this is the same chart. So we were, received that one as well. And then, this is from the Crafty Blue Bonnet, which I don't know if I've heard of them before, but this is the Blessed Spool. And then lastly, uh, Birds of a Feather. Okay, so we also got the January chart, which was this one as well. So they just duplicate, they just gave us some, she likes to give you extra charts when you attend those events. So she throws those in. So that was from the Annabella's Retreat. And just so you know, they've already opened up the enrollment for the spring pop-up retreat which is a virtual another virtual retreat it's going to be on april the 20th i believe and the guest designers for that are stitching with the housewives so i've already signed up for that one because i love their stuff and i always enjoy these and it was unfortunate that i was unable to attend this one so tomorrow lindy stitches and hands on design are hosting the superb owl which is the play on the Super Bowl for those of you who don't watch football, which is me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I actually will be able to go, but I have bought a ticket so that I don't miss out on the patterns, but it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. So um, I think tickets are still available if you haven't bought yours yet. So it's gonna be fun to, I think they're gonna have some Q and A and um, maybe some stitching tables like they do for the other events. So anyway, I hope you can attend that and I'm anxious to see those cute patterns that they have for those. So let's move on to crochet and life update. So I've only been crocheting honestly these last couple of weeks. No stitching and I will explain that in a minute. I have been loving seeing your post on knitting. I am wearing a knitted shawl for this video. I'm not sure if you can see all of it but it is the that's my microphone wire. It is I think I was looking in my Ravelry library because it's been so long since I made this. I think it's called Fading Stripes and I had bought a kit of yarn. If you follow the Knot House when they had a store in Maryland 
it was a mom and daughter they did a podcast and they also had their own hand dyed yarn line and this was one of their collections for valentine's day a couple years ago and it was like this faded and with a gradient of purples and i loved it so i bought it and i found a pattern that kind of would work well with those colors and so this was the shawl that i ended up with and it's just a simple garter stitch you just have to change colors a lot so anyway i definitely just love seeing that everyone is going following along with tiger lily designs she's hosting the beanie along where you can learn how to knit your first beanie which is so exciting and if you can learn those skills you can really do do anything with knitting so just take your time and don't get discouraged if you're brand new it is it's a it's a very fun and relaxing craft and once you discover hand dyed yarns and all that it's a whole nother fun um, craft to be involved with in addition to stitching so I do love knitting I love crochet as well and I've been kind of in the crochet mode these last couple of days it's been kind of a, a mindless craft for me a good craft to to be able to do um, while I have a lot going on right now so I will show you what I've been working on I needed just a super simple project so I made this shawl and I haven't blocked these or woven in the ends yet I need to do that uh, like a one ball project and this is the yarn I use premier anti-peeling DK so it's a size 3 yarn and it had three different colors in it so it's a triangle shawl and it's made had all these colors in the ball and it's actually the pattern was a free pattern kind of made for Karen cakes if you know what those are they're usually found in Michaels and Joann's they usually have three to four different colors so I just did this with the yarn that I had in my stash I didn't even care where the color change happened like see the color change happened in the middle of the row here because once you roll it up to go around your neck you're not going to notice that anyway so this was a just a simple two row repeat. This ball of yarn was a little bit smaller than a Karen cake, so it mine didn't come out quite as large, but it's fine for me. I'm a short person anyway, so I don't really need something super long. So anyway, this was the first project that I finished. I decided I really want to try making more crochet garments that I actually wear because I usually just make shawls and cowls and hats and things like that. So. I decided to do this sandbar cardi by TL Yarn Crafts. She's a very popular crochet designer. So this is what the end garment is going to look like. It's kind of like a spring summer overlay. And I have pretty much have the back totally finished. And I'll show you the yarn that I'm using. This is Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton. So it's 100% cotton yarn. I think it's 100%, let's see. Yeah, Mercerized Cotton. And this is the color Denim, and it's a size four yarn, and it is the called for yarn that the pattern calls for. So here is the back, and it's really long. So for me, I tried it, I, I laid it on my back, and it does go knee length, so this is it's it's made to be like a half sleeve and so i love how it's coming out it really looks pretty and it's going to be nice with like summer dresses or with denim or whatever so i'm really trying to work on this until it's actually finished because i'm finding if i put these projects down and go back to them i have a really hard time figuring out where i am in the project so for instance if you remember a couple months ago i showed y'all i showed y'all some crochet ponchos and when i went to pick those back up i could not remember how to do the increases or anything and so it was really frustrating because i didn't take good notes so i need to just finish these instead of putting them down because if i put this down if i pick it up months from now i won't know where i am so that is what I'm working on currently, and I'm excited to get that one done. The front is made in two different smaller panels, and then those are attached. So that is like a four row re repeat. It's a pretty mindless project, and I really love how it's coming out. So life update time. So just a warning, if talking about um, pets that are unwell and going through things, it's hard for you and you don't like to talk about it, hear about it, I totally understand. You can cut the video off now just know that i will be taking a short break from floss tube right now while i'm going through some things um, that involve that kind of thing so um, if 
you want to cut out here totally understand i'm not going to be going into a lot of detail but still i know it can be upsetting for people to um to talk about sensitive subjects like that so i just want to let you know you can end it here and just stay subscribed to the channel and that way you know when i am back with a video and so why i haven't been stitching that much and why i went <laughs> to crocheting a lot and uh why i'm taking a break from floss tube so a couple of days after filming my last video my 15 year old Yorkie um, she started having trouble breathing and so uh, we kind of monitored her for a little bit and then by that Sunday we realized you know we should probably take her in so we went to the pet ER and they did the x-rays and nothing really stood out to them she wasn't she didn't have pneumonia she wasn't having you know heart failure and that kind of thing so um, they had just sent us home with saying to monitor her and to go to our local vet the following day. So that's what we did. And we took her in and um, they really couldn't figure it out either. They definitely ruled out pneumonia, heart failure once again. And, you know, it kind of sounded like it could be some kind of an upper respiratory infection, but they really weren't sure. So we started out with very, um, very mild treatment, just uh, treating with some allergy medicines and rest and, you know, just seeing if she would kind of get over it on her own. But within a couple days, it was clear that it was just continuing to get worse. So we took her back in and by the time we took her back in, even the vet was like, does she need oxygen? She just really doesn't sound like she can breathe. But what's crazy, it was her lungs were clear. It was just, it sounded like it was all in her head area. Um, we decided to go ahead and start some antibiotics in case it was an infection. And uh, they also sent us home with a nebulizer and to do that kind of treatment. So we did that and her breathing actually did get better. But then she started like fainting spells and we didn't know at the time if it was fainting or seizures because they're very similar they can be similar and um, from taking a video and showing it to our vet he thinks it's the syncope which is like fainting where basically they lose oxygen for a few seconds and they um, kind of black out and then they come back too so the episodes are very quick but they're also very scary and she could hurt herself if she falls when she's up walking around or doing something we've been to the vet not exaggerating at least six or seven times in the last week and a half and um, just constant tests trying to figure out what's going on the only thing we could do that didn't require sedation was an echocardiogram so we just did that uh, like two days ago and we just got the results back once again her heart looks great for her age there are a few things like a little bit of enlargement and and nothing they're surprised about with a 15 year old dog the only thing they could think of that showed a little bit of elevation that could be causing the fainting is pulmonary hypertension. So they put her on some medication and I just got that filled like yesterday. They had to send it to a special pharmacy to compound it because they didn't have dosage small enough, uh, a lower enough dose for her size since she's very small. So uh, we're going to try that and hopefully that gets rid of the fainting episodes. If it doesn't, our only other option is to do like a, a heart monitor make sure she's not having um, like arrhythmia problems or something like that that we that they're not catching in the other test so um, I've pretty much my life has been on hold told me to basically treat her like she was on hospice care and honestly the fainting episodes were getting so bad that she couldn't even walk to her water bowl she couldn't exert any kind of energy so I was having to basically just keep her with me at all times make sure she wasn't walking and try to prevent those episodes from happening and for the most part we did she wasn't triggering as often but it was with me constantly watching her so i have i tried stitching some but literally every move, movement or every little weird breath i had to make sure she was okay you know so it's been a big adjustment for me and i know that this isn't a sustainable way of life but i know we're just getting through this phase trying to help her and figure out what's going on and get her the right medication to help her have a better quality of life i know many of you are pet lovers in the floss tip community as well so i do hope that you understand and i understand that I, you know my feeling is that she's 15 and she's been a really good dog a really good buddy for me all these years and this is my time to really be here for her. So I am putting everything that I can aside until I get this figured out. And um, it has been hard on me too, obviously, because I'm you know, stressed out, not knowing what's wrong with her or how to help her. And 
so I've just been kind of surviving too and my husband is very supportive he's helping me as much as he can but the problem is she's most relaxed with me um, because actually she was in my life a year or a year and a half before I even met him and so when he came around she loved him right away but he was always like the play buddy he was always the guy that came and played with the toys and everything so when she's not feeling good or whatever she wants me around so she's still too anxious if he just tries to keep her so we try to limit that usually it's in the evenings he'll watch her for like 15 minutes I'll run and get a bath and then I'm back so um, it has just been me on call for the last week and a half or so and so anyway I usually don't even know what day it is to be honest with you I'm not usually I, I managed to get dressed and get my hair washed and get a shower for to do the video today but anyway that is what's going on with me so I'm taking a short break from floss tube because I'm not gonna have anything to show you anyway and I want to wait until life gets more back a little bit back to normal and then i'll be able to come and share these things with you and i also want the philosophy channel to always be positive and i want to have to come on here with all these negative things unfortunately though sometimes life does get in the way to where it affects things like this where you just have to be honest and say you know this is what's going on and you know i'm sorry there's nothing else i can do so anyway i hope you understand i will be in on instagram you can always message me and if i have anything to update i will definitely post a picture there um also the facebook group is still open and we'll do the whip wednesday post to share what everybody else is working on and uh, you can always post your finishes and ask questions there as well and I will be probably still doing a lot of crochet or knitting as I go through this until I get her more stable and also the designing and everything has just been put on hold so I hope that you understand and she's getting really antsy she's been in my lap this whole time I'm sure you've heard her whining because it's not where she wants to be this is my craft room she does not like being in here usually when she was fine she would like to stay in our bedroom and that's where her bed is and she's comfortable but I can't leave her back there by herself so hopefully you didn't hear whining this entire video but I'm sure you did because that's just how she is so I am going to um, in this video here and thank you all so much for watching and just like I said stay subscribed because you'll be notified when I am back I'm hoping it won't be that long but I'm just kind of giving you a heads up just so you won't wonder where I am so anyway if you have any questions please let me know and as always happy stitching